On these machines, when you create a new song, all settings, such as the input assignments, your effect settings, well, they're all carried forwards into the new song. Now this makes sense if you want to create a new song to continue a recording session, you'd want to keep the same settings. But it can be a nuisance if you're not aware of it. So if you've ever wondered where that strange reverb is coming from, or why some levels are too low or high, or the panning is all wrong, this is probably the reason. Now if you're new to the machine you can get caught straight away, as the demo song which comes with it is full of effects and settings to showcase the features. Now you might ask, why not just use the initialize function? You go to Menu, Preferences, and scroll down to the bottom, there's an initialize. But this resets everything, including all of these global preferences. The screen brightness, the auto power off, undo levels, and so on. So it's not really ideal for regular use. So one trick is to create a dummy song, or a template, with the required settings. And if you get into the habit of loading one of these just before you create a new song, you're guaranteed the correct settings. And you could even create a few of these with names like Factory or Vocal Group or Drum Kit and so on. So how do you create it? I'll first start with a new song to clear out any audio data. We go to Menu, Song, Create. I'll do the name in a minute, but for now, leave the bit rate and the sampling frequency alone as those two values are not carried forwards, so there's no point setting them here. It always defaults to these values whenever you create a new song, so you'll have to set them each time anyway. Now before we name the song, here's another trick. The song list is sorted alphabetically. So if you want your templates to always appear first at the top of the list, use a punctuation character at the start of its name. Now I use an exclamation mark. Try and avoid anything which might throw a wobbly on your computer if you're going to use it for backups or transfers. And different operating systems and versions treat these characters differently. So let's make our factory settings. You can see the characters you can use here. I don't know if you can see the first character scrolling. Anything before the alphanumeric set, all those punctuation characters could be used. So we'll have exclamation mark. Okay, factory, yes. Now this song is now loaded and we just need to set all the settings you want for this template. So you go to Menu, Preference, scroll to the end. By the way, if you've already adjusted these settings to suit your requirements, make a note first as you'll need to reinstate these. These are not held as part of the song. Go to the end, initialize push F4, double check, completed. Right, now reinstate your preferences before you forget. I turn my auto power save to off. Contrast, everything's okay. Undo levels I set to 10. The peak hold, one second. And the song name use the date as a template for the song name. And that's it. Right, we're done. So this song, called Factory, now has everything reset to the factory conditions. And we just press Save, which is F2, just to guarantee it was written to the SD card. They shouldn't have to do this, as songs are automatically saved whenever you switch to another song, or if you power down cleanly, using the on-off button, but it won't hurt to be sure. Now one important thing, you should protect the template from being altered accidentally. 
if you load it in future and forget to create a new song before you start twiddling, those changes will be saved in the template unless it's protected. So go to Menu, Song, press F4, scroll down to Protect and press F4 again. And you'll now see a padlock appear to the left of the name. OK, so how would you create templates with different settings, say for a particular band? Well, use the factory template as a starting point. So load this if it's not already loaded. Then create a new song with your new template name. So let's assume we started from scratch. You just switch the machine on. It's got some arbitrary song in. We go to menu, song, load. Load your factory template. That's now reset all the settings. We create a new song with your new template name. As you can see, all these names I've created for the templates, because they all start with a punctuation character, they've all sorted themselves at the beginning of the list. Because we loaded the factory first, we know this new song, which I've called Vocals, contains the factory settings. Now you just go through all the screens, your assignments, your effects, whatever you want, set up everything how you like it, press Save, then Protect it, and that's another template. Now if you have more than one SD card, you can use a computer to copy these template songs to each card. They're very small, as they don't contain any audio data. They just copy the whole song folder for each template. And when you next use that card, the templates will appear in the song list automatically. Right, if that's all you wanted, you can skip to the next video. If not, here's a quick run through of some of the settings you could save in a template song. But don't forget, these are only initial settings for songs created after you load the template. You can always override them in the new song. So here's the assign screen. Now we've got clear and default buttons, which may help. And on the DP32, you can also change these stereo tracks to monos. So you could preset these here. The mixer screen, now this is more complicated as it only displays settings for the currently selected item. The item could be a source or a track. I'll cover all this later, but for now just go through them all in order. Press source A, you can confirm it says at the top input A. Change all your settings as required. Source B, same thing source C and so on and then do the same for the tracks this is track 1 change your settings track 2, 3 etc and by the way there's a handy shortcut button you might not have spotted the F1 button which sets your EQ to flat so if you've got some funny EQ settings and you want to reset quickly just press the button a dynamic screen Again, this only shows the currently selected input or source. This is input A, this is input B, and so on. And it only shows the settings for one of the effect types, in this case, a compressor. So we cycle through all these combinations for all the sources if you really want to initialize these to a known state. And one slight problem, you cannot change these effect settings unless the effect is on. So it's no real problem to turn them on temporarily, change the settings and turn them off. However, if you want to leave some of these on, you may come across the dreaded error message if you set too many on. Not available. Now as mentioned in the intro, there are restrictions on the combinations of effects you can have. Now this is all covered in later videos, so I'll not repeat things here. Onto the effects screen. Now, depending on what state you left it in, you may see the guitar insert effects screen, which is these, or the send effects screen. But either way, you need to cycle through each type and all the individual effects. And as with the dynamics, the effect has to be turned on 
before you can adjust its settings, which of course means you may get this not available error message. Now the good news is there's only one send effect and there's only one guitar insert effect as opposed to eight dynamic input effects. So you don't have to go through selecting individual tracks one by one as you did with the sources on the dynamic screen. Okay, that's it. The next video shows how to set up a basic 8-track mixer. The path from input to output is very simple, so if you're just starting out it's an easy way of verifying your connections to the outside world before things get more complicated. So thanks for watching.